Ho, ho, 45 Alpha Charlie Papa coming to you today. And today we're going to take a look at my Spandau GW98 German Mauser. Uh, but this isn't just any Mauser. Um, just not any Spandau 1917. Um, it's had some uh, work done to it. But uh, we'll get into it in a minute. Now, I hear you. You're probably saying, oh, it's a bubbled rifle. It's a bubble rifle. I, 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 stop, 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 stop. Change? I don't like change. Yes, Mr. Smile. I know you don't like change. But, you know, there's something different about this rifle and something kind of cool and unique. I didn't think I was going to actually uh, do this on the channel at one time. But, you know, I was watching American Pickers the other day and they came across some, uh, I believe they were Nash Healy's. And uh, they came across like four or five of them. And the money in those is as a restored showroom quality car. Um, but Mike was jonesing over this one uh, over in the corner that had been hot rotted. Now you think, a hot rotted Nash Healy, why would anybody do that? Well, today's day, if you find a barn find Nash Healy, no, you're not going to hot rod it. But back in the day, back in the late 50s, 60s, when you could buy a Nash Healy, and this car was a Tour de Elegance car at one time before it was hot rodded. But, you know, he found one that had been hot rodded back in like the late 50s, 60s. And that's what was cool about it. Um, it was something that, you know, it was plentifully available at the time. And he, you know, somebody had taken it and put a Cadillac motor and all the, the speed equipment from back in the day. And that was what was really neat because it showed you stuff that people were doing back in the day when these things were plentiful. So be before you, you, you turn the channel, um, and think, oh, I'm going to show you some kind of bubbled rifle. You know, just a second. Let's go ahead and grab this rifle and we'll show you what uh, what we got here. Now, I know it's a 1917. Uh, this is 2017. So happy birthday. It's 100 years old. Uh, but in that 100 years, it's had some work done to it. And, uh, you know, back in the day, back in the 50s, 60s, sporterizing Mausers was a huge industry. I mean, there was a lot of industry that was built because people were sporterizing Mausers. And why were they sporterizing them? They were cheap. I mean, you can go to any gun shop and they had a barrel of Mausers sitting there, you know, a dime a dozen. So you, you know, pick out the nicest one and you, you'd make your own rifle out of it. All right, well now let's take a, a look at what I've got here. And let's take a look at this rifle. I don't like change. Change makes me feel uncomfortable. 1917 Spandau that's been sporterized back in about the 50s and or 60s. Ooh. Um, beautiful, beautiful rifle. Ah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smiles. Thank you. Um, very nice job doing this sporterize on this rifle. It's got a Monte Carlo walnut stock, a beautiful stock. It has been hand really checkered, thin uh, profile coming through the, the handguard here. And there's just this beautiful little schnabel on the end. Uh, they did a really nice job sporterizing this rifle, putting it in as something very classic. Um, the other thing they did, they run this ramp front sight on here, um, and it's got an anti-glare uh, milling on the top here, uh, the nice little bead on the front, and they uh, put a Redfield peep sight on it. Um, and the, back in the day, this was a, a pretty, really nice sight. Um, it was uh, very adjustable, you could really uh, fine tune your rifle to uh, get it accur accurate and uh, very consistent. Um, when now, you're talking about a sporterized rifle, people think a bubbled rifle. You know, it still has the military stock on it. Somebody just took the handguard off. They chopped it short, smoothed it out, uh, maybe bent the bolt on it and, and called it good. You know, maybe they took the sights off, tapped the, the receiver on the front, put a scope on it. And, and that's the extent of what they did for sporterizing the rifle. But this one, somebody took some time and effort uh, to really do a very nice job, do a very good job of sporterizing it. Now, when the previous owner got this gun, there were a few little issues with it. Now, you know, this is something that would have been done in the 50s or 60s. Like I said, it's um, something that was done back in the day, back when Mausers were a dime a dozen. They didn't didn't necessarily were looking at the, the crest or anything like that. Now, I do like the fact that this one has not been tapped on the top um, so that you still have that beautiful crest for the Spandau Arsenal on there. Uh, however, it has been tapped on the side here to put this Redfield peep sight on there. When the uh, previous owner got this, he added a few features to it just to kind of 
finish up the sporter and, and clean it up a little bit. The first thing, uh, problems they were having, um, we were starting to get some stress fractures in the stock. And that comes from the action moving around in the stock when it's being fired. You know, as wood ages, as it dries out, it gets, you know, shrinks a little bit. So you're getting some movement within of the uh, rifle in the stock and it was starting to stress fracture. So how did we fix, how did he fix that? He went through and he bedded the rifle. So now this is bedded into this stock. It's not going to go anywhere when you go to shoot it. Um, the other thing he did, um, if you can see here, instead of that big, thick uh, trigger guard that uh, they had on there, he went ahead and polished and smoothed off some of the steel from there, uh, tapered it a little bit here, uh, gave it a nice finish. You know, not that big bulky military style, a little bit more of a, a sporterized finish. And the, he also went through and recrowned the barrel. I don't know if you can see that there, but he put a, a sport crown on the barrel. So that was another good thing that he did to it. And the best thing that he did to it. And why were the, one of the reasons people were sporterizing Mausers, um, all your current manufactured rifles um, use a very similar Mauser design in their uh, in their rifles. Uh, but you know, the bolt on these, it's buttery smooth. Um, it works really well. And then he added the Tour de Resistance, the Timney trigger. It is short, light, crisp. Oh, it's a beautiful trigger on there. And he also added the Timney thumb safety on the back here. So it's got a really nice safety, pretty easy to uh, engage and, and disconnect. And again, you have a sweet trigger on this gun. So this is a sweet shooting gun. Um, so if you see one of these, uh, you know, at a gun show or at a shop, you know, take a look at it. You know, maybe somebody did a really good job of sporterizing something. You can pick something up, a great rifle at a great price. Um, now, these may command a little bit more. People know kind of what they have, but they're not going to command nowhere near what this rifle would be if it was in its original military configuration. But uh, this is 45 Alpha Charlie Papa channel, and this is my 1917 Spandau Mauser. Um, beautiful, beautiful gun. I really enjoy shooting this. There's a lot of history in this gun. I love shooting this. Uh, you can just feel the history. And yeah, yeah, in its history, it has been taken from a military arm to a sporting arm. But again, 45 out of the Charlie Papa channel. And as my grandpa used to tell me, if you're not making any mistakes, you're not trying anything new. I'm out. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe.